Okay, so good morning. So, <clears throat> the, the goal for today is not to speak about this, but to speak about HTML, CSS, and, and stop it, just HTML and CSS. Um, so for today, you should have read a few documents about web architecture and base, basic information about HTML and CSS. That was the reading number one. We will have other four readings in the course similar to that. Um, so in the first hour, we will do a sort of review of that, those material by trying to do some examples. Um, and in the second hour, we will continue with more advanced topic on CSS. But before doing that, um, Luca told me that in the lab there were um, various questions about promises and a sync await. Um, so he asked me to maybe spend a little bit of time at the beginning of the lecture uh, to, to discuss again um, a sync and uh, await and promises. Um, to, to clarify any, any doubts you may have. No, now we are not speaking uh, about the JavaScript for, so this week we are not going to speak about JavaScript. Next week we are going to speak about JavaScript, but we are not going to use, uh, I think nothing of promises and async, but as soon as we, we will go deep in React, we will need to use it again, because many functions to operate uh, with the server, especially, uh, return a promise and as soon as soon as we again we will need again the database also in that case we will need to handle those things asynchronously um, so mm, promises and async so briefly as Luca should have already told you they are most equivalent way to do the same thing mm? so a promise is an object that JavaScript creates uh, as the name say, it's a promise. The JavaScript promises you that at a certain point, a specific value will have, uh, a specific variable will have a specific value in the future. It's a promise. At a certain point, you will have that value. And that value could be either rejected, so uh, null value or uh, indefined value, or uh, the current value that you, you will need. Like if you query a database, you will need back the results of the query. That is the promise that um, JavaScript does to you. And while keeping the promises, JavaScript allows you to continue the execution of your program without interrupting, waiting for the results. And then a certain point when the promise is resolved, the value will be um, back mm, to you. And you have seen that to end the promises, you have um, if something is a promise, like this get issue, you have the then uh, function. Mm? So promise.then is what happens when the promise is fulfilled, and promise.catch if you want to catch any error, any problem with the promise resolution. And promises can be also chained. Mm? So this then and this then are two promises, one change to the other. Mm? So get owner uh, is changed to send email. So as soon as you have issues, uh, as soon as you as get over, you, you can pass owner to the other email, to the other methods, and so send the email in this case. And this is the equivalent with async await. Hmm? It's the same code, a little bit shorter, um, with the difference is that it's written in a synchronous way, but it's behave in, a in an asynchronous way. Um, the other difference is that you write that in a synchronous way, so get issue with return issue, and then you pass issue to get owner that will return owner, and then you pass owner to send email. So it's written like a synchronous code, normal code. And the other characteristic is that when you use await, you must use async in the function that includes the await. That's mandatory. You cannot have an await without an async and vice versa. And if you need to catch something, like here that you write dot then or dot catch, you can use the synchronous way to catching error, catching exception, that is try and catch. 
So with async, you actually write synchronous code that behave asynchronously, while the promise is you write specific syntax-specific um, way to handle asynchronicity in a specific way with with then etc 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 and you cannot mix the two hmm? you either use promises you get a promise and then in another function you can use a single wait or can use again the promise but you cannot say await get issue dot then or dot catch hmm? so once you choose await and async you choose the synchronous way of writing code, then you should follow that way. So we try, try, catch, etc. Uh, in this other way, you cannot use clearly dot then use dot then dot catch and try catch as a, another meaning, the, the normal meaning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this was promises in three seconds. Um, any questions or doubt that you have things that you didn't understand fully? And after these three seconds, still clearly not clear no doubt about promises and a sink in general at all okay Nothing? Still nothing? Okay. So, um, um, okay. So, web architecture, um, we are not going to, these are the slides that were linked in the, uh, in the reading. So we are not going to speak about JavaScript anymore for a while, so for this week. And also the lab will not be on JavaScript. Um, we will start speaking about the web hmm, today. Because up to last week, we spoke about JavaScript as a programming language to do anything. And we actually use it on, the, on a computer with Node, so without using it in a browser. Starting from today, we are going to use it in a browser. Hmm? So before going to JavaScript in the browser next week, we are speaking about web programming in general and give a few information about web architecture, HTML, CSS, and specifically more advanced feature of CSS. Um, so I assume that all of you read the readings and with care. Um, right is a good assumption, no? And so how many of you know, still know nothing about HTML? Okay, still no. Okay, so you didn't read the reading. Still, still know nothing about CSS. Okay. Um, so can you? There is okay. So questions for you. This is a mm, abstract. Uh, web application architecture, architecture, general web architecture, general, uh, web, uh, a general web architecture picture. Um, so, in where we can identify, let's say, three uh, actors, three main components, which are the users. Okay, that's it. That was easy. Um, so, users. It's not something that we, we are going to, to think a lot about users, but clearly users are the one that if you develop a web application are the one that are the ultimate users of the application. So the reason why you create a web application are people to use it, because otherwise why create something that nobody will use? So you, people will actually uh, send data to, to the application, insert data will be in a form, uh, and the application will need to treat this data appropriately and also display results, display information to the users in a way that is understandable for them. And then again, they don't want to, they want to use again your application, not stop using forever. Uh, because again, the goal is to do something for these people, not just for 
the sake of technicality. And we are not going to, to cover user a lot. We will just use some um, reasonable approach of web design. Uh, but it's not the focus here, clearly, thinking about what to present to users. Um, there are other courses for, for that, if you want. Um, but users interact with the, web uh, with the web application mainly through the front end. Mm? That will be the main co topic of this entire course. And the front end is typically for a web application, a, it's hosted in a browser. browser. Mm. Uh, and the browser understands only three languages in a first approximation. That is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Mm. So JavaScript doesn't understand Python or C or other things. It's basically understand that there are things like WebAssembly, but it's, let's say that avoiding those, those aspects, it's uh, the browser understand HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So to create a front end, in the end, we need to provide the browser HTML, pages, CSS, documents, and optionally, but we will, a uh, JavaScript file for the interaction, for filling out the page, etc. So everything, even um, the more complex framework library that you, you can use, including React, will generate plain, simple HTML, CSS, and JavaScript pages hmm? uh, in the end. And then the front end interact in some way, it depends how it's developed, with the back end. Hmm? Uh, and how the front ends interact with the back end? With which protocol? HTTP. HTTP. Hmm? That is a request response protocol that means Yes, yeah, so you, the front end send a single request and the server reply to that request. And so a new request has no knowledge of what happened before. And that's by design the HTTP protocol or any request response protocol. You send a request and you receive a response and the next set of, the next pair of request response are actually unknown what happens before are independently from any other request or response. And it's always the, the front end that send a request to the server and server reply. And so the server cannot take initiative with HTTP. It's waiting for someone for asking things so that it can provide an answer to an HTTP response. And again, we will spend quite a lot of time on the front end, but also a little bit on the back end. Uh, and in the back end, we will have surely the database, uh, we will have file system if you need to access to images or other content on, on the file system. And then we will have the logic of the application on the server. Hmm? So depending on the kind of application you develop, you can have a lot of logic on the server, applicative logic on the server, a lot of logic on the front end only or both. Mm, a bit of logic on the front end, a bit of logic on the back end. It depends on the kind of application. We will have quite a lot of logic in front end and a little bit of logic in the back end, but just a little. Mm, because we are going again to use, to use a React and it will use a lot of uh, logic. It will implement a lot of things in the front end. Uh, so where are typically the front end and the back end of web or web application running? Physically. Running. Running while in execution, when the user is using the front end, where they are running. Both? Okay. Where is, when I'm using a web application, whatever, a website, where is the front end running in that moment when I am using it? on my computer in the browser. Perfect. And where is the backend running in that moment? On a server somewhere. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So keep this in mind uh, because we are going to clearly 
run everything on our own computer, so both the front end and the back end, but clearly they are typically they are running in several in different places. Hmm? So maybe the back end is somewhere in Canada and the front end is on the browser of the computer of the user that is opening that page in that moment. That's maybe in Italy or any other place of the world. Hmm? So since we're going to use JavaScript for both the front end and the back end, keep in mind this distinction because you will try to copy and paste or better to use from the front end things on, on the back end, but you cannot because they are actually thought to run in different places. Hmm? So you, you can replicate things between the front end and the back end, but you cannot import a file from the back end in the front end because they are actually on different, they will run on different machines in the end. So they will have different uh, view on, on what you can uh, use it. So what, what happens when uh, when you use a web application typically? Uh, the user does something on the front end and then the front end make possibly some requests to the server, the server reply back. The web application change according to the content that it receive and show the results to, to the person that will continue this loop until the web page is closed. And uh, clearly the, the web server, the, um, the web application, the, the backend will, if needed, speak with the database to get information or again, speak with uh, the file system, opening file, opening uh, images, etc., to provide the answer to the web to the, to the front end. Hmm? Okay. So this is a web architecture in, in general. Um, as I said before, we are going to focus more on the front end in this course. We will see a little bit of back end, but later on. And so today we are starting with the front end with the basic of the front end that are HTML, CSS. Because again, these are the three languages together with JavaScript that a browser understand. And so it's important to at least understand how they work and how they are written because again, whatever framework you're going to use, including React, will in the end generate HTML pages, CSS files, and JavaScript uh, files for the browser of the user to be executed. Okay, so any question about this? Okay, so do you see the text? Big enough? Yes, no? Bigger? Better? Better. Okay. So, what we're going to do now is to write HTML first and then uh, a little bit of CSS. And then again, we will continue with the more advanced aspects of CSS. Uh, so we, here we have an exercise still on the topic of the question and answer website. Uh, the exercise asks you to create two pages. We will actually create one of them for time purpose. But again, it's, it's a question and answer website. So we, we can imagine to have a page that lists the questions and then you click on a question and so go in another page that show the question and all their answer. According to the same structure that we used so far, so a question, I have an author, I have a question text, a date of posting, and then an answer as an author, a date of posting, a score, that could be a positive or negative integer, um, and what else, um, and probably that's it. And you can optionally increase or decrease the score, because you have a score, uh, etc. So we will start with just plain HTML, then we will add a little bit of JavaScript, and then we will, no. We will add a little bit of CSS, and then we will continue with more advanced use of CSS. And the page we want to create mm -hmm, is sort of this one. Okay, so we are going to create the answers page. Um, of the question and answer website. 
We can use the questions and the answer that we already we had in the database last week. And so the, the black part are the things we need to add in the page. Mm, so a title, so heap overrun is, is the name of the website, and then we'll have the question text, the answer, and then we will have all the answer in that format with date, text, author, uh, score, and any action like vote. Mm, so increase the score, decrease the score, or add a new, a new element, and then we will have uh, copyright 2023, web application one, etc. Mm, so these are the, the things in black. And the things in, um, in blue instead are the semantic knowledge, the semantic information associated to that uh, piece of information. Mm? So the type, the heap overrun is the title. Mm? It's behaving like a title. The question test is probably a paragraph because it's text. And also by author is a paragraph. And the copyright is in the footer. Mm? So it's not in the header, it's in the footer. And the, the title is in the navigation bar, just in case we will need other navigation, other pages. And then uh, answers will be an header because it's the title of the table that is below. And within the table, we will have uh, three buttons or one button per line and a default button that is uh, this add, that is the last line with some field to insert, so input text to insert information in the table mm -hmm. so what we got, want to do in today is to create this starting with html then moving with css etc but in a static way mm -hmm. so without javascript without interaction at all just information in a web page that you can double click on it and open with any browser mm -hmm. just to again review the the readings about html css and then start learning something new hmm? before taking this and adding JavaScript to add content. Hmm? So this is um, a sort of mock-up of what we want to, to accomplish. Is it clear? It's nothing really complicated. It's just a table with some text. Okay, so what we can do is create um, an HTML page that we can call it answers.html uh, as the exercise was, was saying. And um, so HTML page, all but one said that he knows something about HTML. So the first things in an HTML page is to write is Yes, doc type. That is? Yes, okay, yes. It's, it's clearly HTML, the doc type of an HTML page. Uh, but what's the meaning of doc type? Why we have doc type? So, doc type is written this way minor, um, exclamation point, doc type, and HTML, and then major. Uh, in HTML5, that is, uh, that is the latest version of HTML, and that's the version we are going to use because it's the latest one. Um, so, what's the meaning of doc type? Why we need doc type? It's a legacy. It's not legacy, but yes, it's uh, it's a type. It's a statement that indicates uh, which is the content of that page. Mm -hmm. That that's saying to a browser that actually these are HTML page. That nowadays it's the standard way to to write content. And in particular, say this is not HTML four. This is not HTML. X HTML is not any version of HTML that existed in the past, but is the latest versions of HTML. So this is doc type for the new HTML pages, not the doc type that you can found, uh, let's say, 15 year, years ago or something like that. 
So doc type is the first thing. Then the second thing, the HTML tag. Hmm, that's the container of all HTML, um, the content of the single page. Good. Then there are two parts within HTML that are, let's say, mandatory. Head and? No, not title. Body. Body. So these are two mandatory parts, and you see uh, how HTML is made. We have a tag that includes other tag, and every tag is, for reading purpose, indented, so that you know that when the add tag is within HTML, and the body tag is within HTML, and it's on the same level of the head. And then if we write something within the body, it's within the body. Mm? And that is within the HTML, is not within head. So what's the difference between head and body? Where we need both? The body is for the content that is displayed. So all the content that is displayed is in the body. The head is for the information that are not displayed in the page, but are needed. Like, for instance, as your colleague was saying, the title. Which is not shown in the page, where is shown the title? Yes, yeah, in the browser window, in the tab, it depends if you have tabs or just one window. But it's not in the page. It will be shown here. Instead of new tabs, you will have the title. And the content instead will be shown here in the page. So the title is Eep Overrun. And actually, this is the page of a question, so we can say question one, for instance. And then we can have other information in, in the head. We, can, we will add some information. So we, which are the typical information you can have in the head, if you know, if you remember? The icon of the, of the page, if available, then? Meta, meta information like keywords, the author, um, etc. So information that are useful for maybe a search engine to know which are the keywords of the page, but not to be displayed again. And yes, links to external file like CSS uh, file. Uh, things that needs to be loaded or available before the content of the page is fully rendered. Mm? So we, you need CSS before the page is rendered because you need to, to change the colors, you need to change the layout while mm, before showing the page. You don't want to show the page black and white, all text, and then after a while adding style. You want to add style immediately, in parallel, let's say. Okay, so all of these will go in the head. Or oh, let me also add the language in uh, HTML. So these are called, whatever they happen in the page, these are called, this say that is setting the language to the HTML uh, tag, so the entire page, because the HTML tag is the one that includes everything to English. Hmm? So the page will be in English. It's informing the browser that the page uh, will be in English. So this lang equal something or whatever equal something are called
nobody are called attributes hmm? and this that is within a tag in this case the title is the inner content of the tag in this case is a text but it could be other thing and various attributes can have different sorry various tag can have different attributes so lang is an attribute that is only for html um, if you create a link how do we create a link here a href something title something link to hmm? so this is how you create a link so the a stand for it doesn't stand for link because it's an a anchor hmm? why anchor because they like the name or because there is a reason anchor because the link we always see the link most most of the time we see the link as bringing to a new page but actually the link can also link to the page to an internal parse portion of the page and when the link is for an internal portion of the page is called anchor so you point to maybe a section 11 lines below in the page like you have a index a table of content and then you click on chapter one and you go to chapter one in uh, in the page so the the link the anchor has two attributes that are specific for it that is href that is again the destination link that could be something in the page it could be another link http something and untitled that is an optional attribute. Mm? So the href is a mandatory attribute for links and other attributes are in instead optional. Mm? Uh, and this is the content that will be clicked on clearly. Mm? So if we open this page in a browser and right now you can just open it like a file you will see that in this case there is just this link there is the title and there's just this link that is linked to nothing if i click it doesn't happen anything because i don't have a proper link set up in this moment but it's a link it's behave like a link and it looks like a link okay so but we don't need the a link here we need uh, um uh, a title in the page so what we are going to to do here a header what we are going to do here instead of the link yeah someone said the right thing but h1 h1 stand stay for Either one and how many headers six, six. Mm -hmm. so h1 up to h6 h1 is the most important and h6 is the least important and graphically they are represented as h1 the bigger and uh, h6 the smallest mm -hmm. but um, keep also this in mind that what you write in html is the semantic of the page and not how it looks okay so what does it mean you describe how you want to uh, you describe which are the textual content 
um, and you can say I would like these to appear according to some rules that RCSS but you write uh, this mostly so the tag are representing the semantic info well not title are representing the semantic information of the page so h1 say this is an header of importance one the most the highest importance it doesn't say it's 24 pixel it's it's up to you you can decide that h1 is 12 pixel or and small and h6 is the biggest one it's, it's contrary to the semantic of the page, but nobody is preventing you to do this. You're saying that everything here that is heap overrun is the most important header in the page. That's what the things that you're going to say in HTML. You're not going to say how this is depicted on the page in HTML. Then clearly, if you say that is the most important header, you want to depict it in the most important way. That's reasonable, but it's not prescriptive. Okay? Um, okay, then... So, sorry, uh, this was a good, a good observation, but uh, I was asking... So what's the difference between semantic and um, non-semantic information in a page? So H1 is semantic and P that stands for paragraph is semantic. It says this is a paragraph, right? It say how the paragraph is shown in the page? No. So again, HTML, especially HTML5, is for representing the structure, the semantic structure of the page with the content that you have. But then all the layouts, the color, the decision, the graphical decision are not in the HTML file, but they are defined in CSS. That instead represent the style of the page. The fact that H1 is bigger, red, and centered on the page is something that is CSS that decide to do. Okay, so we have uh, H1, and then what we need? Uh, we need the question that we say that is a paragraph. So paragraph is P, and the question we can use question um, 1. And we can say, we can create a new line then and say the first question, is JavaScript better than the same question that we are asking since week? And, and then we need another paragraph that is by author. So this is another paragraph and say asked by let's say me so these are three paragraphs each paragraph is a new line so if we save this and refresh this we will see with, with the zoom um, the result Okay, then we can add other, if you want, um, semantic information, like we want question one to be strong. And we want the name of the author being with an emphasis. So the qu question one is stronger should be st depicted in a stronger way than a normal paragraph. 
and the author name should be add an emphasis that is M for um, respect to the normal paragraph these are attributes that you can apply to any text also within um, a link or within other things and how they are depicted by default before I press refresh and we will see strong how is strong depicted by default bold and em italic so there is also the bold and italic uh, tag that is b and i um, but nowadays prefer to, uh, to use strong and yam because of semantic meaning hmm? leaving to the developer in css to define what strong means so indeed if we refresh this we we see the results so um, i told you that we are not defining style we're just defining content and semantic meaning but here clearly we have a bigger reader and the question one is bold and my name is italic but we didn't define that i told you it's default who is using who is setting this default we aren't the browser hmm? so the browser every browser has a default style sheet that's supplied always hmm? so when you don't define something and if there is a default it's be used the default of the browser that is in some cases browser dependent so a normal page can a page in this way can appear differently according to the browser that is shown okay but we we said that the title should be in a navigation bar or let's say in a header part instead we just put it here saying okay this is an h1 so an important title so we should put it in something in some container that will be then uh, included in our navigation bar in our header part and this container can be not in a million years like one of the answers not div but the div, div is fine this is is, is right but header it could be also nav but since it is an header we can use header so what change graphically i refresh it nothing because this is a container that by default doesn't have any specific style applied so we have a few containers a few tags like header we have footer we have main we have aside etc and we also have div clearly that are container for grouping together other tags that have a semantic meaning together should be put together so header is used for header is used for grouping together things that should go in a hello header is used for the header hmm? to put things in a header and incredibly footer will be used for the footer hmm? putting things in a footer uh, main this is less easy main the main content of the page hmm? there's a tag that says this is everything that will be in the main content of the page so it will not be in the header it will not be in the footer aside any guess aside also the name border no not border but aside aside the main so it typically are a column 
So, you know, the website is typically two, or two columns, maybe one smaller, one bigger. Aside is the content that is not in the main part, but is a column, like a navigation column, categories, etc. That's aside. And then if we define here a side, we can define an aside here. We didn't have in the, in the uh, let's say, this is a sidebar. And we refresh we see that it's actually not moved in a sidebar because again by default all of these doesn't have a specific uh, layout in the default css but it has a meaning for us knowing that a side will be a sidebar and header will be things in the header and footer will be things in the footer etc and then there are other tags like article that should contains articles uh, sections that should contain a section of a page um, etc. And then there is div. What is this div? A generic container. Mm. So when you when you need a container for only styling purposes, so for things that are, doesn't have a meaning, a semantic meaning, so it's not um, an header, it's not a footer, it's not the main content of the page. It's just I need to put together these three paragraphs because of styling issues or styling purposes i can use a div but it's a generic container and like the others doesn't have a standard representation in the default um uh, in the default um, style of the browser mm -hmm. so here we can for instance say so this is an aside and we can say that this is a main and we can put everything in the main for instance And then we will also have a footer, so we can also create a footer container mm -hmm. that will have a paragraph with a copyright, with a copyright symbol, and 2023 web applications one. Is that something like this? And this again will show the sentence we have just added hmm. semantically in the footer, but right now it's just there after the rest of the text. We can then say that the footer tag will be at the bottom of the page, for instance. But something that we are going to say in JavaScript, in CSS, hmm? not with the default style. So anything is clear up to now? Do you know everything that I wrote in this page? So if I ask any question of this, you will be able to answer. Okay, what is this? Yes, that is represented like the copyright symbol, but why I wrote it in that way? E commercial, E, e and copy and semicolon. It's just for the copyright or there are other things written in that way? It's for the special characters, exactly. Our special characters, so like that one, but you can also have, if you write E commercial and st start writing something like E, you will see there are a, a few of them. Like for instance, E acute. What is E acute <coughs> to you? It's a E with, with a QR accent. And also there is E grave, that is the E with the grave accent. And there is A acute and E A grave, and there is I acute, etc. So all the charter with an accent can be represented in that way. So this is the standard way to represent a special character that since we are going to, to mostly use 
we are going to write uh, English content, we are basically not using that hmm? because there is very little, no, basically no accent character. But in other languages, we will have. Hmm? So that is a way to, to write those charter in addition to just write the charter. Um, okay. So let's go back, let's go to, to the browser for a moment. Um, and let me add, oh no, it's fine. Um, so we, we have used, uh, so let's focus on the paragraph. Uh, we have three paragraphs in the main, right? The questions, number one, the, que the actual text of the questions, and the asked by. And then we have other two tags within the paragraph. That is strong and em. Is it correct? Right? We have paragraph and within strong and em. Yes? Yes. So why paragraph um, creates a new line and strong and em no? And also, if I add the link, also the link will not create a new line. Why this fa some things will create a new line and other things won't, don't? Also the title, also either one is creating a new line. Instead of the link, uh, the strong and the EM, they don't create a new line. Why? Default settings. Yes. Yes, exactly. In, in HTML, there are uh, various ways of displaying things. The two default ones are inline and um, block p h1 h2 h6 etc are all blocks meaning that they occupy all the space they can in the page so when you have a block the block occupy all the space horizontally in the page so when you have another block it go new line because th the space is over by the previous block the inline components instead just occupy the space that the content told them to occupy, to tell them to, to use. And you can see this if you do if you do inspect element. Uh, it's barely visible, but you select something. You can select something. So let's select the first P. So you see that the text ends after a while, but the block is using all the page up to the end of the page that's the blue part um, instead if we select a link you see what happens the link is just using the space that the links <coughs> needs so four charters in this case and you can see here that the P is a, well, maybe it's not really visible, but this P has an attribute that's a default attribute that's called the display, that is block. So most of the elements in HTML are blocks. So occupy all the space that they can. This means that if you want to put, uh, to use P and to put question one on the left, and is JavaScript better than Python on the right of the page? We will need to do something because otherwise the block we will use all the page uh, wide and we cannot really put two blocks one after the other if they're using all the space. Hmm? And so there are then various um, a display, the default one, the standard one, the oldest one, are block and inline. 
uh, but then there are other like flex and grid that we are going to, to see it and you can change it so in this case I said that this first paragraph is a display in line so I overwrite temporarily the display property of that paragraph to another one hmm? so you can do it in the browser inspector you can see you can try things on uh, CSS uh, clearly as soon as you refresh the page you lose all the changes but for quick try to understand why things are not behaving like expected the browser inspector is really useful especially for JavaScript but also for HTML and CSS and you can also um, see what's called the box model hmm? so you see that this paragraph as a content that is the blue one that is uh, 18 pixel in this moment on my computer on my screen is 18 pixel uh, high and 1000 and something wide because it's full the full screen is the full browser window and then it has other three properties it has padding that is not present in this moment there is border and there is margin that instead is present in this moment so hmm? what, what are these three things padding margin and, and border every elements can have a padding a margin and a border so what is a margin so in this case we have a margin that is a margin of 16 pixel top and down top and bottom but nothing no margin on the left on the right you see there is no orange area on the left and the right what is a margin it's the space that you can insert between this block and other blocks so this block has is 18 pixel from the previous block and the, and the following one that we will have their margin uh, border in this case we don't have a border but border the border yes the outline typically the outline uh, but it's the space between the margin and the padding that represent the border that you can also draw like the outline it's a solid border in red if you want to uh, put a, co um, a frame within a, around uh, an element hmm? and you can have a size of this border it could be one pixel it could be five pixel it could be a very large border black border 100 pixel if you want so it's a space also in that case can, they can be visible they can be put a color um, a style on it it could be solid it could be uh, in other format and then there is padding let's see if somebody else so border so margin is the external uh, space between elements pa a border is the border that is still internal and then there is one more thing internal close to the content that is padding that is it's a space between the border and the elements so uh, how much space you have between again the border that you can define or not if there is no border between the margin and the elements hmm? so uh, it's another kind of space so you can set up this three space as you wish you can only have margin you can only have, we can have the three of them two of them as you need to represent the information in your um, in your document and these three have four properties that well border are some more but uh, these three have four properties that are to you I mentioned them before for the margin not the size but the yes the size in a way so the the, the space between in, in all the in all the sides that you can define in pixels so the space which are by four top bottom left and right and you can say I want a margin of 18 pixel let's say and this will apply to all the four properties 
top, bottom, left and right. But you can also say you want a margin of 18 pixel on the left and I want a margin of 15 pixel on the right and I want a margin of 5 pixel on the top and 0 pixel on the bottom. So you can also uh, set up independently one from another according to what you want to show or represent on the screen. Okay, so uh, we will go back to CSS, um, but we, we, we need first to complete this, this page. Um, so we need to add here oh. um, in the main, what do we need to add? Do you remember what do we need to add? Yes, before the table, the header of the answers. So we can have here the header to say answers. So what we're going to write here, another title. So H2, we already have one H1, so we want a smaller title, a less important title. H2, and that is answers. Why H2 and not H5? Because? Can you repeat? <coughs> yes, so we can actually, we shouldn't, but we can actually use whatever number we want here. We can write H5. We shouldn't, but we can. So if we, uh, I refresh this, this is an H5. That actually is smaller than the paragraph, but we can. But if you validate this HTML page with a validator, it will tell you that it's not valid. Because you have H5 without having H4, H3, and H2. So to make a valid HTML page, you should have H1, and then H2, and then H3, if you want multiple. You cannot skip one. That's why that is semantic information. Because if you don't like that H2 is so big, because it is big, if you don't like it, it's too big, you can change it in style, but not change the meaning that that is the second important header in the page because it's the one that happens just before the most important header, that is H1. Hmm? So all of this is semantic information. Hmm? Because HTML is a standard language, so there is, um, there is a standard, so you can validate it if it's correct or not with validator on the W3C website. So now we need the, the table. So the table is a tag that's called table. The table has, is structured similarly to an HTML page. So in HTML we have the head and the body, and in the table you have the table head and the table body. It's called T head and T body. So, what is the table head? The head of the table, the, the, the first row that is typically bold and has the information about the table. Mm, so. This is the table head. Date, text, author, score, action, this is the table head. And all the body is the content of the table. Hmm? So here we have the table head, and within the table head and within the table uh, body, we need to define each row separately, and then each column within the row separately. Hmm? So we need to use table row, TR, to define a single row. And then one, in this case, th, that are the cell of the table head, 
one for each column. So the table head will have one row because it's the header of the table, and we will have five columns in this case. Date, text, author, score, and action. So the first th will be date, the second th will be text, Table had the cell. <laughs> it's the cell within the table head. Um, it's probably stands for table head, and the other one is table header. But um, uh, so text date author uh, th uh, te date text author score and then action. And this is our table head, and then we need to do the same for the table body. Define the row, define the cell in the row, and then define a new row, etc. So TR, again, because it's a row. And in the table head, the cell was called TH. In the table body, and I don't remember what this stands for, but in the table body, it's called TD. Okay, the cell is TD. I don't remember the D was stand for in this moment, but it's the cell in the table body. Hmm? And we need to write those in the same order than in the table head. So we put first the date, second the text, third the author, four the score, and five the action, and we need to follow the same order. So the first one will be the date. That could be 15 of February. 2023. I'm getting the same information that we had in the database. I've just them written here. And then we have the text that is yes. And then we have the author that was Luca. And then we have the uh, score. Or maybe it's written here. No. Uh, that data. TD stands for data. Hmm? And the H stands for header cell. Um, the score that was minus 10. And then we need a button. Right? The button that was vote. So we can write button. That's an HTML element. And we can say write, for instance, vote. And if we go here and refresh this, we will see that there is a beginning of table with the default um, style that is no border, no anything. And also the button has the default style that is a normal button. And you see that the table head is in bold. Okay, so now we need to do this. If we want to add another row, what do we need to do? The same thing. So I'm actually going to copy and paste this and change the information. So we have we add another other three, two, two ans three answers in total. So one was the second of March, and the answer was not in a million year, and the author was. Guido Rosso and the score was 8 and the button is the same as before and then we can copy and paste the TR one more time and the date was the 4 of March and the answer was both have their pros and cons and the author was Maria Rossi, and the score was zero, and the same button. Okay, and then we just have one more line, and then 
the page is over the line that we are missing is the line to insert a new row in the table so the one with all empty space to insert an answer and then a button that say add the answer so we can copy and paste this one more time and what we are going to use it instead of the actual content because we need spaces something here to insert text so what we are going to use here say that again input input is a, a cell is an element that get you inputs of different type you can also validate and tell the uh, page which kind of inputs you want so in this case this is the date so the input will be of which type date so type equals so inputs as an attribute is called type and you can define type text number date etc in this case is a date that will mean that the browser can show you a date picker in this case for that input uh, the second one was um, the text so the type is text the third one is the same it's still text uh, the third one the other one is text still actually um, but we can say that there's a size for instance of three so we can say that small input because we need just to insert numbers few numbers uh, and the button becomes add in this case Not there is actually a number so let's use a number because it's, it, the score is for sure a number and we can say the size anyway hmm? of the of the input field if you want So if we save this and refresh this, we can see that we have a date, a date picker. We have a text in which we can write. We have another text field and we have a number that we can and we know, so know there's a number because we, are, we can increase it and decrease it as we wish. And we can also write clearly a number. But it gives us, the browser gives us these extra facilities like for the date. And then we have a button that is date. So clearly this size with number doesn't work. And notice one thing, so let me tell you one thing and then we will have a break. This input field, these input fields are implementation dependent, browser implementation dependent. So it means that, well, the text one and the number one are easy, but for the tape picker, for instance, you will have a different behavior in Chrome than in Firefox. It's still a date picker, but they will appear differently if you open it in another browser. So for instance, in Chrome is day, month here, and then I can select a date here. But if we open this, let's say in Safari, but it's, it's actually different again you will you don't have dd mm year 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 you just have the current date and with the month first and then you don't have a button for the date picker but if you click on it it appears the date picker and in firefox it has another behavior so it's always for date 
but how it appears is implementation dependent on the browsers so this applies for the inputs field clearly the text is easier and also the number easier but the inputs field are implementation dependent on the browsers mm, that open the page on how they appear more than how they work clearly okay we can have 20 minutes break and then we will continue